lights up. Hey, wait a minute, where are you going? Out. Well, I can see that. I thought you had an essay to write. Well, I can do that when I get back. Yes, well, you better... What are you wearing your coat like that for? <laughs> I what? Not over your shoulders. I've just slipped it on. I may not wear it. You should make up your mind. Why? Well, if a coat's got sleeves, no doubt put on at considerable expense, why not use them? It's not a cape, is it? I don't know what all the fuss is about. Just because I haven't got my arms in the sleeves, what's wrong with that? Well, let's just say it's a trend I don't particularly approve of. Apart from that, he looks affected. <laughs> affected? You're so bourgeois. Matthew, come back here. Are you wearing makeup? <laughs> what? You heard what I said. Are you wearing cosmetics? No. Yes, you are. Your eyes are standing out like saucers. <laughs> well, I've got a little liner on. Liner? <laughs> and some base. Base? Oh, no. I thought we had enough problems with your hair changing colour. My hair's not changing colour. Well, the bathroom towels are. They're turning green. <laughs> if you're using peroxide... I'm not! I'm just bringing out the highlights, that's all. Highlights? Oh, no, I don't believe it. What's this for, Matthew? What's the reason for it? It's a very good reason, actually. I'm going for an audition. An audition? At the college. I'm taking up acting. Taking up acting? When did you ever stop? I'm serious. I want to do something with my life. And I know now I'll never make it as a rock singer. Why not? I haven't got a voice. Well, that's never stopped the others. Why acting? Because I'm looking for something. Ever thought there may be something I can do better than anyone else in the world? You found it, Matthew. It's called skiving. You don't approve of actors, do you? No, I don't, as a matter of fact. That profession attracts a very dubious type of person. A little too fun of the eyeliner and standing around with empty sleeves. <laughs> Apart from that, they live in a fantasy world, and you certainly don't need that. What's wrong with a little fantasy? People like fantasy. They like to dream. That's why actors can make a lot of money. They can also starve. Most of them are out of work, Matthew. Well, perhaps I'll be one of the exceptions. Well, perhaps. I wouldn't bank on it. Well, thanks for those few words of confidence. Well, it may interest you to know that Lydia thinks I have potential. Who's Lydia? Our drama advisor. Well, I thought there'd be a woman in it somewhere. <laughs> she's putting on scenes from Shakespeare and she's asked me to audition. She'd like me to read a sonnet. I know. Why don't you let me read? No. Why not? No, I've got things to do. Such as? Uh, I've got to water the geraniums. That's no excuse. Come on. Won't take a second. I suppose it's a love poem. Yep. I thought so. Read it to Enid. I don't want to read it to Enid. I want to read it to you. But I'm busy. What's the matter? Are you embarrassed? No. Yes, you are. You hate any expression of feeling, don't no, you? No, I... All right. Get on with it. <clears throat> <clears throat> Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thou art more lovely and more temperate. R oh, I'm sorry. I thought I heard raised voices. That's all right, Enid. Matthew's just comparing me to a summer's day. Oh, poetry. That's nice. Go on, Matthew. Rough winds do shake the darling buds of May. And, and summer's lease hath all too short a date. Sometimes too hot the eye of heaven shines. And often is his gold complexion dimmed. And every fair from fair sometimes declines by chance on nature's changing course untrimmed. But thy eternal beauty shall not fade. <laughs> well, what do you think? I think I better water the geraniums. <laughs> I must finish that iron. <laughs> now, Matthew, we'll take it from put out the light. Right. Put out the light? No, without the book, Matthew. <laughs> without the book? Well, we have been rehearsing for several weeks, Matthew. You should know our lines by now. After all, we open on Friday. Of course. And I do appreciate you coming round to help me like this, Mrs Lane. Please. Lydia? Lydia. Or better still, Desdemona. <laughs> Innocent child bride of a fiercely passionate and fiery warrior. Right. <laughs> now, take it from put out the light, and when you get to when I have plucked thy rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Kiss me. I beg your pardon? Kiss me. 
Now? Yes. On our settee? Yes. We have to see if it works. We haven't done it yet. I, I realise we haven't done it yet, Mrs Lane. Um, I, I thought we were saving that for the night. Well, we can't leave everything for the last moment, Matthew. And when you get to our balmy breath that dost almost persuade justice to break her sword one more, one more, kiss me again. Again? Yes, twice. Um, that makes three times in all, Mrs Lane. Yes, you see, it's your kisses that wake me from my slumber. Um, uh, well, I realise that. I realise my kisses wake you from your slumber. Is Mr Lane going to be there on Friday? <laughs> he's going to be there. He's moving the scenery. Oh, good. No, you're... Put out the light. <laughs> no, the line, Matthew. Oh, sorry. Put out the light. And then put out the light. <laughs> Excuse me, Enid. I'm finished checking the woodworm. I'd like to go through. I wouldn't go in there, Mr. Willows, at least not without knocking. Why not? That's not for me to say. All I know is she's old enough to be his mother. What? <laughs> One more. <laughs> One more. Matthew, could I see you for a moment? What's that? Just what do you think you're doing in there? Rehearsing. All right, Matthew, I'm not reproaching you. You wouldn't be the first young man to have his head turned by an older woman. But it never works. Believe me, I've seen it happen. There's no future in it. Oh, it may look rosy's now, but she's not getting any younger. <laughs> now just think ahead. One day you could be pushing around in a wheelchair, feeding her rusks. You don't want it. Rehearsing? For the play. <laughs> play? I mean, you were acting with her? Yeah. I didn't think I was doing it for well, real. I, I, I didn't know what to think. <laughs> well, I must have been pretty convincing. Convincing? Well, I want to know is if that's the rehearsal, what's the real thing going to be? <laughs> Mrs. Lane thought we should bring out the realism. Well, you're bringing out the realism, all right. Mrs. Lane? What do you mean? She's married? Yeah. Why was she stretched out like that? She's supposed to be sleeping. It's the bedroom scene. The bedroom scene? <laughs> You mean you're going to be romping around with a married woman in public? <laughs> Not romping. I have to smother her. Oh, that's great, isn't it? First sex, now sadism. <laughs> and what about Mr. Lane? What's he going to be doing during this night of lust? Moving the scenery. Is he? <laughs> be lucky if you don't get a weight on your head. No, I won't, because it won't be me up there. It'll be Othello. You're playing Othello? Yeah. What's wrong with that? Well, I can see one slight drawback. He was black. I know. <laughs> Well, couldn't they have got one of the black students to play the part? No. They're all in the basketball team. <laughs> Except Clyde. He wouldn't touch it. Well, why wouldn't Clyde touch it? He's playing Henry V. <laughs> Henry V wasn't black. I know, but we thought I'd make a change. <laughs> well, couldn't you have played Henry V? No. It's all swords in that scene. You could cut yourself. No, I'm more of a smotherer. No, I have to go. She's waiting. Oh, and uh, try not to interrupt us again. This scene requires a great deal of concentration. the light and then put out the light <laughs> if I quench thee thou flaming minister oh dear oh dear I can thy former light restore <laughs> should I repent me oh. but once put out thy light th <laughs> 
that to Matthew. I can't do it while he's staring at me. You better get used to it. They're going to be staring at you on Friday. What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Start again, Matthew, and I don't think there's any reason to put the light on and off. I thought that was an interesting bit of business, Lydia. <laughs> I, was, I was demonstrating that I could switch that light on and off, but not yours. I don't think it's strictly necessary. You think they'll get it? Oh, I'm sure they will. Oh. Start again, Matthew. No, not while he's here. Matthew, I think we begin to need an audience. I don't mind an audience. It's all this groaning. He thinks I'm rubbish. Oh, I'm sure your father doesn't think that. Of course not. <laughs> Little wooden, perhaps. Wooden? Yes, well, when he says, put out the light, and then put out the light, I don't think he should sound like a visiting electrician. An electrician? <laughs> and a dozy one at that. But well, that's only my opinion, of course. But, um, isn't it a little more to Othello? Yes, now, I see, I think that is quite valid. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could brighten him a little. <laughs> Why? He's not that bright, is he? He's only going to bump his wife off because someone's got her handkerchief. All he's got to say is, what's happened to your anky, Desdemona? She could tell him she lost him, there wouldn't be any murder. <laughs> There wouldn't be any play either. I think the handkerchief is largely symbolic, Matthew. Precisely, Lydia. We're talking about a man who loved not wisely but too well. Not easily jealous but being wrought, perplexed in the extreme, like the base Indian threw a pearl away, richer than all his tribe. <laughs> You've obviously studied the character, Mr. Willows. Henry. You've obviously studied the character, Henry. Not only studied it, lived it, Lydia. Oh. Yes, I think I know a little about jealousy and passion. You mean you speak from personal experience? Mm, you could say that. Yes, to play a fellow, you need to know something about pain and betrayal. That's very true. Of course, it's not Matthew's fault, because he's young. He hasn't lived yet. He hasn't been touched by tragedy. There's been no drama in his life. It's been mainly farce up to now. <laughs> what? Well, perhaps you could show him what you mean. Sorry? Well, you could do it for him. Let him see. I'm sure it'd be extremely helpful. Well, well I, I, I'm no actor. <laughs> Mind you keep interfering? Well, you wouldn't mind, would you, Matthew? No, I could use a good laugh. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, I was only expressing an opinion. Yes, but it's not so easy when you have to do it, is it? Please. Can I? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> put out the light and then put out the light. <laughs> if I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can again thy former light restore, should I repent me. At once put out thy light. A cunning pattern of excelling action. I know not where is that Promethean heat. <laughs> when I have plucked thy rose, I cannot give it vital growth again. It needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Sorry. <laughs> well, something like that, Matthew. <clears throat> oh, that, was, that was jolly good, Henry. That's what I was doing. Well, not quite. Would you like us to go further? I don't mind. <laughs> no, I think I've seen enough. Could I have my script back? Henry. <laughs> Hello, Deb. This is for you. Enid's got hers. What's this? A ticket for tonight. Ah, uh, sorry, Matthew. I can't make tonight. It's free. It's complimentary. You don't have to pay. Yeah, well, that's not the point. I've got a long-standing arrangement. Didn't I tell you? No, you didn't tell me. I just assumed you'd be going. All the parents will be there. Yes, well, I would have liked to have been there, but you know how it is. I've got this important meeting, and I'm in the chair. Any other time. What about Saturday? Are you doing it on Saturday as well? <laughs> Yeah. Yes, well, Saturday could be difficult. See, I've got this... Long-standing arrangement? Well, yes. You think I'm going to fall flat on my face, don't you? No. You think I'm going to make a fool of myself? Of course not. You'd be very good. You didn't think I was very good the other night? Well, no, but I could see a lot of potential. I think you'll surprise them. 
What do you mean, surprise them? Well, by being very good. Oh, remember, just before you go on, take a deep breath. You'll be tense and nervous, so you'll be using a lot of oxygen, and you need that for the brain. In fact, take several deep breaths. <laughs> You think I'm going to be lousy? No, of course not. You'd be very good. And try and move naturally. Naturally? Well, try not to look as if you're on strings. You do think I'm going to be lousy? No, you'll be very good. And don't look down and mumble. Pitch your voice to the back. And if you forget your lines, wait for the prompt. And if you can't hear the prompt, watch Lydia's lips. She'll give you the lines. Oh, and when you kiss her, don't make a meal of it. Just remember... Her husband's in the wings. <laughs> Anything else? Nope, no. Nope. It'll be a triumph. But if they do want to carry a shoulder high from the theatre, find out where they're taking you first. <laughs> and I thought you'd be proud of me. I can't do anything to please you, can I? Oh, I was only joking. Matthew, I meant it. You'd be very good. Oh, what time are we going tonight, Mr. Willows? Where? To see Matthew. I won't be going in it. Why not? Because he's going to fall flat on his face. But all the parents will be there. Not this one. Oh, but Mr. Willows... Yeah, it, Matthew couldn't act his way out of a paper bag. He's more wooden than Andy Pandy. <laughs> I still think we should support him. Well, I didn't ask him to get up there and make a fool of himself. Perhaps he wouldn't make a fool of himself if you showed a bit more confidence in him. He's only doing this to please you. Well, he's failed miserably. <laughs> Anything else, Enid? I know you're my employer, Mr Willows, but sometimes I could nail you to the brickwork. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Enid, there's a spare ticket if you want it. Oh, no, Mr Willows, you keep it. Give it to a friend, if you've got one. <laughs> Put out the light. <laughs> put out the light. And then put out the light. <laughs> if I quench thee, thou flaming minister, I can thy former light restore. <laughs> Selling nature. I know not where is that Promethean heat that, that, that can thy life for you. Should I be friendly? Um, when I have cut thy rose, I, I cannot give it vital growth again. It, it needs must wither. I'll smell it on the tree. Oh, oh, uh, oh balmy breath. <laughs> almost persuade justice to break her sword. One more. Whoa. One more. Oh, no. One more, and this the last. Who's <laughs> <laughs> there? Othello? Aye, Desdemona. Will you come to bed, my lord? Yeah. Uh, have you prayed tonight, Desdemona? Yeah, and look what she's got! Aye, <laughs> my lord. If you bethink yourself of any crime, I'm reconciled as yet to heaven and grace. Solicit for it straight. Alas, my lord, what can you mean by that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I would not kill thy soul. Talk you of killing? Aye, I, I do. Then heaven have mercy on my soul. <laughs> Early? 
Yeah. You've still got some makeup on. I was in a hurry. Mm. Well, there no celebrations then? No backstage parties? No, they're tomorrow night. <clears throat> well, <clears throat> how did it go? Great. There was a lot of reaction. <laughs> I think they like me. You should have been there. Yes, I should have been there. Well, perhaps I can make tomorrow night. No, that's all right, Dad. I know you're busy. <laughs> um, I think I'll have an early night. Matthew, I don't care what they say, I thought you were very good. Thanks. It's not your fault it was a disaster. These <laughs> things happen. I'm sure Laurence Olivier's had nights like that. Yes, I, I thought... No, um... she's right. It was a disaster. The bed was like a trampoline. <laughs> Couldn't remember me lines. I sweated so much my makeup ran. <laughs> to crown it all, I ripped Lydia's dress off. <laughs> I've got to go through it all again tomorrow night. That's if her husband doesn't get me first. <laughs> I'm just glad you weren't there, that's all. Oh! Well, as Enid said, these things happen. Only to me. No, that's not true, Matthew. I haven't told you this before, but I was in a play once. At school. Julius Caesar. I played Cassius. Yes, I was very good in rehearsals. They even predicted a career on the stage for me. But on the night, in the assassination scene, I trod on them and my toga, tripped and collided with the scenery. Three pillars that were supposed to withstand the ravages of time fell into the stalls. In the confusion that followed, I stabbed Brutus instead of Caesar. Brutus got angry and stabbed me. In the meantime, Caesar was fed up with being stabbed anyway. <laughs> saw his chance of escape and started fighting for his life. <laughs> like a scene out of West Side Story. Crikey, sounds like a real disaster. <laughs> yeah, and if that wasn't bad enough, I left me watch on. <laughs> what? <laughs> Have you ever seen a senator from ancient Rome wearing a wristwatch? <laughs> no. Uh, I haven't been on the stage since. I've got to go on again tomorrow night. <laughs> well, listen, I'll come and see you after all. Can't get worse. No. You know, I'm really glad you didn't see me tonight. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> I think I'll go and water the geraniums. 